What's up you guys, America and welcome back to my channel. No, you grow up. So for today's video, I'm finally getting around to doing my top 10 figures of 2022. And to make this a little bit more fun, I'm gonna break it up into two separate videos. So this one is gonna be my top 10 TMNT figures, and then I'm gonna do a second top 10 video of everything else that I collect. So I'm very biased when it comes to turtles. I know if I did a top 10 video, just straight up with all my figures it would probably end up being about six to nine figures of turtles and that just doesn't seem as fun so i felt like it'll be a lot more fun to do it this way if you saw my opening videos you'll see that i got a ton of turtles in december or at least opened up a ton of turtles in december and it really shook up my top 10 for sure so for like the last six months i've pretty much had one figure in my top spot that i didn't think it was going to get pushed out of there and surprisingly it did so i'm really excited to talk about these figures so let's get rolling all right you guys so you were looking at what is essentially my top 20 20 figures of the year so there might be some other figures that could squeak in here but what I basically did I had a whole bunch of figures in mind so I grabbed those right away and then I just kind of started grabbing the figures off my shelf that just really stood out to me really made an impression on me when I got them and I pretty much have a good reason for every single figure being in this top 20 so my top five were definitely very strong top five I knew all five of those figures were gonna be in my top five I wasn't 100% sure where they were gonna all end up until I really sat down and thought about about it but 6 through 10 was the most difficult part of making this probably figuring out which figures weren't gonna make it was very 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 hard and when I was down to my 9 and 10 spot that's where it really 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 got hard because I didn't know which figure of the remaining figures that I had left that I could leave out and I'm gonna show you some of the ones that got weeded out early so what I'm gonna do from here is we're gonna look at my first five figures that are out so essentially my 16 through 20 in no particular order and then we'll look at the five that just didn't make the cut so my 11 through 15 and then from there we'll get into my top 10 alright you guys so in no particular order this is kind of my 16 through 20 so every figure that's in here is a figure that I really really like that I got this year but they just don't do enough for me or they have a glaring issue they kind of kept them out of serious contention of my top 10 and they were the easy five to kind of shave off the Raphael figure is cool but it really doesn't do anything that special that the original Raph figure doesn't already do other than coming with the soft goods jacket and having the hat already sculpted on I will say his integrity feels a little bit better than the original turtles I like the way he feels but again just nowhere near the caliber of figure that would have made my top 10 scrag is a really cool figure but again there's a lot of cool figures in my top 10 so he was just another one that was an easy one to take out so leatherhead is just kind of an odd figure for me the thing i really like about it is it fixed everything that i hated about the playmates figure it made them big bad and menacing and that's the way i want this figure to be that being said I never really loved that design either. It's not terrible. It's not the worst thing I've ever seen. If it's not one of my favorite Playmates figures, there's probably a good chance it's not going to be one of my Super 7s, with a couple exceptions here and there. But being that he was my least favorite figure from Playmates, and he was still considered to be an honorable mention for my top 20 of the year, really does just show you how much I think they improved upon that figure. Ray Filet and Casey are both two figures that I like a ton. Again, Ray Filet, not a figure that I love from the main line, and I know I'm kind of in the minority on that one, but this figure is just amazing. But he looks great. He's big, he's bulky, he's thick, he's exactly what I want out of that figure. I really like the alternate head sculpt for him. Him and Casey both kind of have that same QC issue where their waist is just kind of detached from their hips, and it breaks up the mold, and it just makes it so there's no way I could put either of these figures in my top 10. The Casey really hurts because I really do love that figure. It is one of my favorite figures, but there's just so many figures in this top 20 that I do love a lot as well. And one with a glaring QC issue, just, I mean, it just wouldn't be fair to put that in my top 10. But there's not really any other figures that have these glaring QC issues, so it did not feel right putting them any higher than 15 on my list. All right, you guys, so now we're looking at what is essentially 11 through 15. And there's three figures in here that were very, very, very hard to leave out of my top 10. So without placing them in any real particular order, I would definitely say that 14 and 15 would be Ace Duck and the Dark Turtle, and then 11, 12, and 13 would be the two Mikeys and the Slash. So a lot of people probably think I'm nuts for having Ace Duck this high, but I'm going to be honest with you, I don't really have any issues with this figure. Mine has zero QC issues. He moves well, he feels good, his wings go in, they stay in. I don't have any problems. Yeah, his jacket could be a darker color. I would like that a little bit more, but he has probably my favorite head sculpt out of any action figure that I own. So if you were a kid in the 90s and you read X-Men comics, who were the two coolest characters? Wolverine and Gambit. And what were they always doing? Smoking. I was just raised by my media to make me think that smoking looks cool. And I'm going to be honest with you, 
I think it does. Being fully honest with you guys, I'm an ex-smoker. I smoked from when I was about 16 to 24, and my body is very happy that I gave it up, and I definitely became a much healthier person after I just stopped partying and smoking all the time. But I'm not gonna lie, when I watch old movies and TV shows, and the badass in them is smoking, I still think it looks cool. I'm really bummed that we're not getting that smoking crusty head on that figure, and I know Disney probably called the shots there, and that's a bummer, but this might be the only smoking figure that I ever have, and I just really like that novelty. The Dark Turtle I don't really have any problems with. He's a great figure. Again, he just doesn't really do anything special enough for me that put him in my top 10. Yeah, he's cool. Yeah, he's fun. But he just doesn't really have whatever he needs to get pushed any higher than where he is on my list. So the two Mikeys and Slash, they were figures that when I was down to my last 13, it was really hard to decide from there. So when I got that Slash figure, I said it might be the best Slash that's ever made. Clearly, I express a lot of recency bias, and even with my top 10, there might be figures that might not make it six months from now because I am just so stoked on them right now, but ultimately, this list is just the way that I'm feeling right now. I still think that Slash is great. He's an excellent figure. Again, to be in my top 13 figures of the year is still a pretty good achievement. Two Mikeys, same thing as everything else, great figures. I have no QC issues, they're both beautiful, but again, I have a lot of great figures in my top 10, and they were both really hard to leave out. Being just outside that top 10, still great action figures, but everything going forward, it just has a little bit more edge or just something special to me that put them in my top 10. All right, you guys, so here it is, my top 10 TMNT figures of the year. So again, it was really hard cutting off those last three figures to get down to my top 10. But the rest of this order is pretty difficult. And if you ask me a week from now, there might be some stuff shifted around in here. Maybe one of those figures that were the first couple that were out of my top 10 might be in here. But I love every figure that's sitting in front of me right now. So my NECA animated series Raph and my NECA Secret of the Use Raph, they kind of represent all four of the turtles because they are pretty much the same molds. Yeah, they have different head sculpts for the Secret of the Use turtles, but the cartoon turtles are pretty much all exactly the same. Raph's my favorite figure, so he's pretty much always what I'm going to go with. But we'll just start weeding these guys out one by one, and eventually we're going to be down to the figure that I think was the best of 2022. Alright you guys, so coming in at number 10 is my Secret of the Use Raph. So, I was really, really, really excited for these figures to come out this year. I've said it before, I love the original movie. As an adult, it probably might be my single favorite piece of TMNT media. But when I was a kid, I loved Secret of the Use. It was my favorite movie. I watched it all the time. I love that intro so much. And guess what? I was the intended audience. I was five. That's who it was meant for. And I just loved it. I could not get enough of it. My parents probably got so sick of me playing that movie nonstop. But I love it. I love these figures. They look great. I have the head from the accessory pack that I just got on its own. Shout out to TJ, Cybertronian Collector, for hooking me up with that. So I definitely think I prefer the first movie figures a little bit better. And that's just because those costumes are the better designed ones. But as actual figures go, these might be even a little bit better. Even though they come in at number 10, there is no way that these Secret of the Use figures weren't going to make my top 10. Alright, so coming in at number 9 is my NECA Toon Ground Chuck. So... I've said this in a couple different videos. I think this is kind of one of the best examples of where NECA is with the two line right now. Their sculpts are on point, their deco is on point, and this guy has like zero issues. I know Brendan said in one of his videos, he thinks one of the problems with the original Playmates toy is that it just has too many colors and too much going on, but that's kind of what I like about this design. Like, he's wacky, he's crazy, like, he just looks ridiculous. Like, nothing on him matches. He just really is just like someone threw up a bunch of colors onto him and for whatever reason it just works for me. I just really love how much they've improved upon this line and this figure like I said if you go back and look at some of the older figures like the Triceratons it's just night and day different the quality in their figures now. I cannot give NECA enough props for just listening to feedback and improving on everything. I think NECA just keeps getting better and better and I'm really excited to see the figures that come out this year. All right, you guys, so coming in at number eight is my Nekatoon Wrath, and these, I know, are technically a year old in the mold, so these molds were used when they came out with the Turtles in Disguise in the original dark colors, but these figures came out this year. They came out in the Style Guide colors, and I've said this before as well, I prefer the Style Guide colors. I know the darker ones are more accurate to the actual cartoon, 
but there's just something about the bright green ones that just pop a little bit more i don't know what it is i like those 90s style figures i like bright neon and stuff like that and i just really like the bright green a lot better it's crazy how much they improved upon the original molds when they put these out like i said i still think as an actual play thing the sh figuarts are my favorite turtles but as far as tune accuracy goes, I think these are the king now. The sculpt is just a little bit less broken up than the SH figure arts. And while those head sculpts do look great on those figures, like, I don't know, these ones just really do scream the cartoon to me. So coming in at number seven is my NECA Mirage Casey. And this is a figure that I've been waiting for ever since they announced the comic line. Of course, they gave us the not right color version first, and I'm sure the red shirt version is gonna be in that stupid Walmart auto tee bullshit again, but whatever, I'll be excited for that guy to come out. And for the time being, this is a great figure. I love it. I know it has probably some reuse in the legs with some other old tune figures and stuff like that, but I don't know, it's Casey, I love Casey, clearly take a look at my logo. Outside of Raph, he's my favorite TMNT character, and this figure is just done really well. He might not be the most exciting design or the most exciting sculpt, but like I said, I just love Casey. The fact that he's not honestly higher on my list is kind of surprising. Even the fact that I don't have any regular Raph figures higher than this just really shows you that there's been some great figures that have came out this year and they're even better than my bias. All right, so coming in at number six is my Playmates Last Ronin figure. So this figure was honestly probably one of the biggest surprises for me this year. I wasn't really ecstatic when I saw the promo pictures of this figure. And if you've heard me talk about Playmates in recent time, you'll know that I'm not the biggest fan of everything they're doing and I wish they were doing more. And this figure is exactly what I wish they were doing. Like it's just everything that's right with Playmates. They're in their regular scale, that four inch, four and a half inch, whatever scale it is. And it fits in well with the old turtles, but they gave it updated articulation. And I would just kill for a turtles line like this. Like, they have the potential. It's shown with this figure. They can do better than they're doing right now. And I just really hope that they start doing that soon because this figure is just something special. It's definitely not as technically good as every other figure that's in my top 10 or even my top 20 for the most part, but it just has charm like it just it can't be denied how charming this figure is and i just don't know a better word for it like i love this figure i've loved it ever since i got it it sits on my desk and i just love looking at it and again i couldn't really rank it any higher than this but the playmate still has something in the tank they can do more than they're doing and i just really hope this isn't just like kind of the last twinkle of their twilight all right you guys so this might come as a little bit of a shocker to people because if you heard me talk about this figure before, you'll know how much I praise it. This is a beautiful figure. Like, objectively speaking, I think it is the best figure in my collection. So it might be a little bit of recency bias that's playing into what's going forward because I got this figure right at the beginning of the year this year. I'm pretty sure I got my wave in January and ever since I've had this guy, I thought he was going to be my number one figure of the year. There has been a lot of cool figures that have came out since then, but this guy is just amazing. What the Horseman put into this figure, like, it just brought out everything that that original sculpt had, and you just would never know how sweet of a figure it really was until this guy came out. Even just looking at the Playmates figure, like, you can look at the detail in it, but without the deco, without the size, like, this is what this figure was meant to be. This is just a damn near perfect figure. Yes, my hips are starting to loosen up a little bit and that's kind of concerning and it really just kind of worries me to see what my Super 7 figures are gonna be like in a couple years, but for the time being, I'm still very happy with this guy. He stays upright. I don't have any issues with him falling or doing the splits or anything, but again, just a beautiful figure and every figure that's in my top five could probably be argued at my number one spot at one time or another, including this guy. Another Super 7 figure that just took a figure that I loved and made it even better. 
I know some people don't like the dark green, but I kind of like the dark green more on it. I don't know why, but he just looks a little bit more badass with the dark green. So this was probably my most anticipated figure of the year because if you've seen my Playmates video, you'll know that Slash is my favorite figure of all time. So I had very high expectations for this guy and I was not disappointed. He just did everything that I wanted him to do. He's just like the original Slash. He's just bigger, better, and more menacing and I could not be happier to have this figure. I just think about all those childhood memories of me playing with that original Slash figure, and again, when I look at these figures from Super 7, that's what I see. I feel like I'm still holding those same figures in my hand, but they just grew up with me. All right, you guys, so you were looking at the sleeper figure of the year. So when this guy was announced, I'm not gonna lie, I didn't really think that much into it. It was expensive, it's an import figure, and that's just not really the kind of stuff that I'm into. I'm not really into stylized things. And he does come with the accessory pack to make him look more like a regular Leo, but this figure is amazing. And I cannot explain to you how cool it is in just holding it in your hand. The second I took it out of the package, it just felt like it was higher quality than any other Turtles figure I have. The glaring issue, yes, he is very small. He's honestly, I think he might be smaller than Playmates figures, honestly. He's pretty tiny. He's smaller than my Ronin figure. But the one thing I learned about this figure that really came as a shock to me is that women have not been lying to me my whole life, and size really doesn't matter. I'm going to do a full review on this guy because, again, I just want to talk about how awesome he is because people just need to know what they're missing out on with this guy. Yes, they're very expensive. They are an import figure but they come with so much stuff. It comes with that separate accessory set, like I said, so you can turn them into regular Leo. But this is now my most anticipated line of the year. I cannot wait to get the rest of these guys. Really excited to do the full review on this guy, and it's gonna be coming soon. All right, you guys, so as soon as I got this figure, I was positive this was gonna be a shoe in for my figure of the year. I love Usagi outside of the Turtles realm. It's one of my favorite comic series. It's one of the few modern comics that I have in my pull outside of Power Rangers and Turtles. This figure is just perfect. Like, they killed this guy. I have no issues, no complaints. He is a little bit of a simple design, but that's okay because they killed it. Like, I just can't explain to you how much I like this figure. I missed out on the autographed black and white ones, and I'll probably get the regular, I mean, I know I'm gonna get the regular black and white ones when they hit Target and stuff like that. But, God, like I said, this is one of the few tuned figures that I doubled up on so I could keep one in package too because we don't get a lot of Usagi figures and it's really disappointing. And it would be really cool if NECA could just do a straight up Usagi line so we could just get all those other characters from that universe. Like, they, I feel like he's pushing Yukichi to be like a big sidekick character right now and I would honestly love to get that figure. Again, even I'm surprised that he didn't end up as my favorite figure, but... Like I said, December just brought a lot of figures and it just, I mean, was probably one of the best months of figure opening that I've ever had. All right, you guys, so here it is, my favorite TMNT figure of the year. So like I said, December was a very strong opening for me. When I got the Playmates Ronin figure, I'm not gonna lie, I didn't think I was gonna be as excited about the NECA figure because I was so stoked on that Playmates figure. But as soon as I got this guy out of the package, I was blown away. This is everything right that NECA can possibly do. I've said in past videos that I think what they do best is their live action figure. So I think the best Turtles figure they make are the live action movie figures, but I think this guy tops them. I think it's almost a perfect combination of their live action animated comics. Like everything they do right about every single one of those lines they put into this figure, the only real annoyance was that he doesn't come with two Tomfas, and after taking the one from my unarmored Ronin figure and giving it to him, I kind of noticed that they have a little bit different washes on them, but again, that's okay, I can overlook it because he is just such a good figure. So when I first got back into reading comics, it was about two months before this hit the scene, and that's honestly what brought me back to a comic shop. I wanted to figure out how I could get my hands on this, that's when I learned that I could just start a pull at a comic shop and they just pull comics for me and save them and I could just come in and pick them up on the weekend. And as soon as I read that first comic, I was stoked on this storyline. The first issue of the Ronin series is still probably one of my top 10 favorite comics of all time. If you haven't read that series, 
you are missing out. It's one of the best turtle stories told in probably the last 20 years. The Batman vs. Superman comics are really good. The TMNT and Power Rangers comics are really good. I'm really excited for the Usagi crossover that's coming as well. But the Ronin series is amazing. I'm pretty sure the prequel series drops next week as well. I highly recommend you guys go hit up your local comic shops and try to get your hands on these because it is just an awesome story. It's exactly what you want if you want a more mature adult Turtles. If you're into the Mirage stuff, I would say that the Ronin series kicks it up even a notch from there. It's not as ridiculous as the third volume, the Image Run, which is absolutely just bonkers off the walls, like hard to even consider it regular Turtles. But again, if I can give you guys one strong recommendation on comics, it's reading that five-part miniseries. You can get the hardcover on sale at a lot of places, and again, I always suggest you go support local. Go support your local comic shops and stuff like that. They might be able to hook you up with back issues and stuff. They might have the hardcover collected edition, Go help out your downtown, help out your comic shops. The more comics you buy, the more awesome comic series we're gonna get like this. Bringing it all back to this figure, getting this in my hand, it is literally like they ripped that Ronin right out of that first comic. I'm not gonna lie, I think this guy is gonna be my favorite figure for a long time to come. He's just something special. All right, you guys, so that's a wrap for this one. Like I said, I'm gonna be back with my not TMNT top 10 figures of the year. And even though it is technically not TMNT figures, somehow there's still going to be some TMNT figures in there. If you collect any other lines, you might have an idea of what I'm talking about, but technically they're not TMNT figures. I consider them Power Rangers figures, but a couple characters from the TMNT universe are definitely still going to be inside of that top 10. So thank you to all my subscribers. Thank you guys for sticking around, liking my videos, commenting. I've had a lot of more people start messaging me lately, and again, I love hearing from you guys. Like, you guys, like, don't ever be afraid to think you're bothering me when you say incredibly nice things to me. Like, it really does make my day. Like, I promise you, I'm a real life human being on the other side of this camera. And yes, I do this for fun, but anybody that says that this doesn't weigh on them emotionally is full of shit. Like, this is exhausting. I, every ounce of free time that I pretty much have goes into doing something productive towards making my next video. Like, I've been talking a ton about comics and stuff lately, but I have not read a back issue of comics since I started this channel. I've pretty much only been keeping up with what's in my poll and that's it. I was on a tear through X-Men 93 through 200 and I just died around 158 when I started this channel and I have not been back to it since. So again, when you guys say those encouraging things, like it really does mean a lot because I really am putting a lot into this. I know it's hard to believe because my content's not great, my editing's not great, my camera work isn't great. I'm still not great at talking, but I'm having a ton of fun and you guys just seem to be responding really well to it and again, I just feed off of that. The more fun I'm having, the more fun you guys seem to be having and we just keep feeding off each other and I hope that just keeps getting bigger and better. That's all I got for you guys in this one, so take it easy, be safe, and I'll catch you guys later. Peace!